Over the years, uh, we've seen the emergence of uh, plant-based plastic alternatives for packaging, medical applications, housing, construction, and other unusual applications, right? Can you paint a picture of what's going on here? Certainly. So this is a field that has had a lot of failure. It's, it's a lot older than you might think. Natural fiber composites, i.e. bioplastics, have been around since the 1960s when Mercedes tried to invent them as a weight-saving measure. Uh, for their vehicles. Now, they couldn't preserve the cellulose in a way that kept it from rotting, so they ended up, ended up uh, abandoning the technology in the 1970s. But um, there have been multiple attempts since then. You know, companies as large as Coke Industries have patented, uh, you know, fiber-based bioplastics. You also have, you know, the traditional oil and plastic makers that are, you know, trying to use processed uh, uh, biomass to, to make a number of different plastics. Like you've said, everything from packaging to medical devices uh, to, you know, just every day objects. The problem with all of these in, in general is, is expense. It's very easy to use plastic, which is a byproduct of fuel production. You know, once you've compounded that with uh, plasticizers, elasticizers, UV stabilizers, dyes, colorants, to use that plastic for basically everything. It's one of the most useful inventions of, of human history. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, the, the issue then is, how do you do this better? And, and I think one thing that we could talk about is why should you do this better? And, and the, the reality is that until recently, it's contributed about 7% of all human emissions, the, our plastic usage, it's, it's going up to about 20% of all human emissions. So we need to get a little better on that, right? If we, you know, if our goal is to save the planet, we need to, to reduce those emissions. So people have been turning to biomass for that reason, because biomass is inherently carbon negative. Uh, you know, plants, they export oxygen and import carbon dioxide. So that's a really good thing for the planet. And if you can util utilize that, rather than extractive things like oil, theoretically, you can do good things uh, for the world. Now, there are problems. Um, the first one is that processing cellulose takes a lot of energy. In fact, more energy than it takes to process oil. So you're already upside down on your CO2, on your power usage, um, the minute you start using things like hydrolysis or pyrolysis uh, to turn biomass into a plastic. The other problem is durability, right? The reason that plastic is so useful is it never goes away. <laughs> so, um, that's also one of the mm -hmm. reasons why it's so harmful to the environment. But um, you know, if you need something to last a really long time, you make it out of plastic. So how do you get biomass which is inherently unstable and biological uh, to mimic something that is permanent, right? So there's a lot of challenges with that. So there's there's a number of companies that have tried that. I'd say there's around 20 companies right now that are really in production and, and, and making different kinds of bioplastics, but they face a hurdle that everyone else uh, has, has already beaten in the plastic industry, which is price. This is a commodities market. You cannot charge a green premium. You cannot charge a sustainability premium. You can't get mass buying all over the world unless you can get down to commodity prices. So mm -hmm. that's really been the global challenge in adopting uh, bioplastics materials. And that's not even getting into disposal because theoretically we know how to dispose of normal petroleum-based plastic. That said, we do a really, really bad job of it. Like 95% mm -hmm. of all plastics that are produced annually aren't recycled. They're landfilled or thrown in the ocean or burned. This is terrible. And so adding a new material into the mix, this biomass, um, you know, and, and saying, hey, we're going to totally process this the right way, it's a fantasy. Anyone who's serious about sustainability is worried about bioplastics and the effects they may have on our environment. For instance, biodegradable plastics for packaging, they release methane. Right? When they break down, they release methane. Now, this could be really useful. If we capture that methane, we can use it for power. But there's no infrastructure for that. There's like 10 large-scale methane digesters in the entire world, which is what's necessary to capture that methane, right? So if you're just using the general biodegradable that you throw in the trash, you're expecting it to go away in the landfill, you very, feel very sustainable about yourself because you're using this bioplastic rather mm -hmm. than regular plastic. Well, it goes over to that landfill and it emits 18 times more harmful gas than carbon into the atmosphere, hmm. right? So you're actually hurting the earth by using that particular kind of bioplastic. So there's consumer confusion, there's price challenges, there's infrastructure challenges, and there's disposal challenges for all types of plastic, including bioplastic.